I designed air conditioners, cool job, right? But we also did a deal with NTU and I got to work with a whole bunch of scientists. And we, every week we'd have our design meetings. We all got around in the room. And the most important thing you leave at the door coming in our, to our designs, they talk, leave your ego outside because believe it, we will bash it. Why this makes a difference when you're talking about design is simple. If you've got an ego, you don't necessarily speak out because you're thinking, well, what if I make a mistake? I lose this. Well, what if you do make a mistake? We all made mistakes in our team. One of our developers, like one of the scientists was always on about airflow being not so high on one of our original designs. And we're going, well, how much airflow? One day he says 40 cubic meters a second. That's like jet engine territory. So when we worked it out, because we now needed to buy fans so we could build a prototype, I needed a 10 horsepower fan that would pin you against the wall from uh, three meters away. Didn't work. But so we had to go back to the drawing board. So we did. Uh, we no longer had a nice compact design we were going to put in the attic. What we ended up with is a split system with half the machine outside, half inside. But that's also a catalyst for a lot of other ideas. Every time you get a bad idea in a design room, somebody comes along, hey, that won't work, but if we do it this way, this works. So we do this every day of the week in our meetings. If you've got an ego, that does not happen. You're out the door, you're gone with an ego. Now the same scientist is responsible for some extremely advanced mathematics on um, our new coil designs, meaning that our air conditioners are now roughly double the efficiency of Daikin's best. Where would he be if he'd worried too much about his ego? Would he have done the math? Would he have made the breakthrough? Not necessarily so. So, always take chances. It's like, says over there with Mr. Zuckerberg, <laughs> move fast and break stuff. Take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. And of course, my little circuit board, said prototype board here. Wait, got the camera there, right? This one. Because I'm recording right? the voice as well. So what this board is for is to control our new air conditioner. And I've got a few blocks on it. Power systems are over here. Safety circuitry and ADCs for our input circuits are here. And right here we have two footprints. We're using Android things, which is an unusual choice. But we're doing that because we need online security and we need online updates. What we cannot afford is a bricking event. Can you imagine a bricking event involving 10,000 air conditioners in 10 different countries that are worth $10,000 each? How much does that cost? So Android Things, it's specifically designed for robust online updates, robust security, and controlling IoT systems. So that's why we chose it. And the reason for a Raspberry Pi, Pi footprint on here is because supported for development of Android things is the Raspberry Pi 3B. But we can't go to production with that. To go to production, we have to use an NXP module because it's got advanced security features. So that's where the smaller footprint and the Edison style header comes in. So that's my little hack. I put that together recently and now just starting to assemble the boards. But before I even got to assembly, I found I'd messed up on footprints as well. <laughs> After a later, I ordered the wrong size. So I had to go back and <laughs> reorder up the waste letters. It wouldn't fit. But also because I have a problem with the way libraries are done and searching in Eagle CAD for capacitors, I misjudged the size of some of the capacitors. My footprints are too small. So I've got a little bit of hacking to do. But that's okay. This is the first of what will be between four and six versions before we get to production ready designs. 
So there you have it, there's a few ramblings for you. <laughs> and of course, one other little rambling. Whenever you go anywhere, wherever there's professional people about, whether it's an airport, train station, never be afraid to speak up. One of my friends now works for Singapore Power because I said hello to her over the university. When she needed to change jobs, I was the connection. So wherever you go, say hello. You never know who you meet, and you never know when you're important to that person, or they're important to you. I met my boss at a hackware meeting. I'm now involved in the development of the cleanest air conditioners on the planet. It's not just that they're more efficient. We're moving toward using new classes of flammable refrigerants because we're able to use very, very small amounts. 500 grams versus the average of 11 kilograms for your traditional split system. But where the big difference comes in is when you release gas at the end of life. Standard refrigerants have global warm, warming potential of 2088 for our 410A. The new Daikin refrigerant R32 is 6, 000, uh, 677 times CO2 and global warming you know, potential. The flammable refrigerants we're using, because we're using factory sealed systems, we're able to do that. Global warming potential on one of them is about three, on the other one it's less than one. Combine that with the difference in the amount of refrigerant, we're upwards of 30,000 times cleaner. All this because we put a whole bunch of scientists and geeks in a room and said, go at it, guys. Sort of make it up as you go along. Bash each other's egos. Come out with an idea, and I've often done it. Come out with an idea, and somebody said, no, you're completely wrong on the aerodynamics. Ten minutes later, somebody else comes up, drawing board, starts drawing, and says, this will work. We have a solution. So there you go. Thanks for listening. <laughs>